Okay, let's see some more examples with bad numbers that came from the textbook. It says, use the midpoint rule with n equals 4 to approximate the area of the region bounded by the graph of f of x equals 1 over x squared plus 2, the x-axis, the lines x equals 0 and x equals 1. I'm not even going to try to graph this picture because I don't know what it looks like, but I know what we're doing here is we're looking at the area of this function from 0 to 1 using the midpoint rule and four rectangles. That is, we're finding m sub 4 for this function on this interval. It says round your answers to three decimal places. Well, if we round our answer to three decimal places, I don't know if they mean the final answer or each individual step. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start rounding it at each individual step because this is going to get absolutely insane. So let's look at this. The first part right here, we need to consider how many rectangles there are. They want four rectangles. Let's look at the second part. The second part is to determine the width of every single one of those rectangles. Well, that's delta x, which is the right endpoint, which is 1, minus the left endpoint, which is 0, divided by the number of rectangles, which is 4. So this is going to give us 0.25, 1 fourth, which is 0 0.25 is the width of each one of those rectangles. The third thing we do is we draw that number line. We label the left endpoint 0, the right endpoint 1. We break it into the number of rectangles. So it's four rectangles. I need to do three slices. We start off on the left endpoint, which is 0. We're going to add our width every single time. So 0 plus 0.25 is 0.25, plus 0.25 is 0.5 plus 0.25 is 0.75, and our last one would be 1. So what do we want to use? There's our four rectangles, but to determine the height of each one of those, we need to use the endpoints. So the first rectangle is from, or sorry, the midpoint. The first rectangle is from 0 to 0.25. If it was the left, we would use 0. If it was the right, we would use 0.25. But this wonderful book chose to use the midpoint which is halfway between them. So how do we find the midpoint between those? Again, you would do 0 plus 0.25, and then enter, and then divide that by 2, which gives you a value of 0.125. That's our first value right there. What's the next one? We'll do 0.25 plus 0.5 divided by 2. And I'm getting 0 0.375. Five, sorry, three, seven, five. And then you do 0.5 plus 0.75, divide that by two, and I'm getting the next midpoint would be 0.625. And then the last one, 0.75 plus one, enter, divide that by two, and I'm getting the last midpoint is 0.875. Again, add the two numbers and divide them by two. So the fourth step is determine which numbers we're plugging in. Those are the credit numbers that we have to plug in. So now we're going to do steps five through seven all together in that chart yet again. Again, we start off with our x values, which are the x values we just determined. There's four of those x values. So I'm going to make space for them. Again, those x values were 0.125. 0 0.375, 0 0.625, and 0.875. First thing we need to do is determine the height. The way that you do that, uh, one sec, H -E. there, is you plug it into the function, which in this case is 1 over x squared plus 2. The second thing you need to do is determine the width, but we already did that. That's delta x, which in this case is 0.25. So every single one of those is 0.25. The next thing you need to do is determine the area. And to get the area, you do the height times the width. So we're going to multiply each one of those numbers and see what we get from the height. And then after that, we find the total by adding all of those numbers together. Okay, So we have to use our calculator to find out what each one of these function values are. So I'm hitting table. I'm clearing it out. I'm doing a fraction. I'm doing 1 over, sorry, 1 divided by. And then I have x squared plus 2. OK, and I hit Enter. Start step, ask x, OK. The first one I want to do is plug in 0.125, enter. 
Again, it gives me a dang fraction. So go over to the fraction, hit the double arrow button, and here's where we're gonna start rounding to three decimal places. So this is gonna be zero point, well it's four nine six one, so that rounds to four nine six. Let's do the next one, which would be point 375, hit enter. Again, it gives me a fraction. I use the double arrow button, I round to three decimals. I'm getting 0 0.467. Next one I plug in is 0.625, hit enter, go over to the fraction, double arrow button, and I'm getting 0 0.418 when I round to three decimals. And the next one I put in is 0.875, I hit enter. I go over, double arrow button, and I get 0 0.362 if I round properly. So now that I have each one of those heights, I need to multiply them times the width. So I'm going to do 0 0.496 times 0.25. I hit enter, and I get 0 0.124. The next one, 0 0.467 times 0 0.25, and I'm getting 0 0.1. 117 if I round to three decimals. 0 0.418 times 0.25, and I'm getting 0 0.105 if I round to three decimals. And 0 0.362 times 0.25, and I'm getting 0 0.091 if I round to three decimal places. So that's the area of each one of the rectangles individually. Now I need to add those up. 0.124 plus 0.117 plus 0.105 plus 0.091. When I do that, I'm getting a value of 0 0.4. 7, round to three decimal places. So you might have a little bit of a different answer just off by a couple of decimals, and that's because we actually rounded twice. We rounded with the height and we rounded with the area. So when we add them up, we do have error in that answer. Um, so if you're, if you're off just a little bit from the textbook or a little bit from your WebAssign values there, the reason that you have a slight bit of error there is just because of rounding. <coughs> if you were off by, um, a couple hundredths, that last decimal place on the test, I'd still give you full credit on this problem because I understood that you rounded at a different place than me. For instance, if you used all the fractions in here and you use fractions here, you might have only estimated at the end over here. So um, I use decimals rounded to three places from the beginning. My answer might be slightly different than yours. Again, I would give you full credit. Okay. So let's do the last example like this. It says, use the midpoint rule with n equal to four to approximate the area of the region bounded by the graph of f of x equals the square root of x plus one, the x-axis and the lines x equals two and four, x equals four. So what did they just say? They said, we want four rectangles. We wanna use the midpoint as the height. Our function is x squared minus one and the interval is two to four. Again, it says round your answer to three decimal places. So we're gonna be rounding our answer a bunch here. So essentially what they just said is find M4, uh, well, it's, it's written right there. Find M4 for that function on that interval, okay? So step one, number of rectangles. N is four rectangles. That's the first thing we have to note. Second thing is, is we wanna find the width. How do you find the width? Well, the width in the notation is delta x, which in this case is the right endpoint, four, minus the left endpoint, which is two, divided by the number of rectangles, which is four. So four minus two is two, divided by four, so that's one half. I'm gonna use decimals, I'm gonna use 0 0.5. Third thing we do, we draw that dang interval. So this is from the interval, left endpoint is two, right endpoint is four, and again, we have to break it into the number of rectangles they want. They want four rectangles, so I'm gonna do three equal slices. I need to label those, so I start off with the far left, which is two. I always add delta x each time, so two plus 0.5 is 2.5, plus 0.5 is three, plus 0.5 is 3.5, plus 0.5 is four. So now I have the proper labels for our one, two, three, four rectangles. I've got to think about that first rectangle is from 2 to 2.5. If it was the left endpoint, we'd be using 2. If it was the right endpoint, we'd be using 2.5. But what they wanted is the midpoint. So we have to find out what that midpoint is. 
To find that midpoint, we add the two numbers and divide it by 2. So 2 plus 2.5 divided by 2 is 2.25. 2.5 plus 3 divided by 2 is 2.75. 3 plus 3.5 divided by 2 is 3.25. And then 3.5 plus 4 divided by 2 is 3.75. So the fourth one was determine which points they want us to use. Those are the points that they want us to use, the x values we want to use. So all the rest of the steps, when we're looking at the rest of the steps, 5 through 7, we can do all of those in that nice chart to organize it. We start off with our x values. There were four x values that we're plugging in. Okay. We have to find those four x values were 2.25, 2.75, 3.25, 3 and 3.75. We have to find the height. To find the height, we always plug that into the function, which in this case is the square root of x squared minus 1. We have to find the width of each one of those rectangles. Well, that's delta x. That's already given to us as 0.5. So I'm going to fill that in for every single one of those. Once we know the height and the width of each one of those rectangles, we can find the area. And again, the area is the height times the width. So I'm going to multiply those two numbers, whatever I get. That's going to give me my area of each one. And then from there, I add them all together, and that gives me the total. So let's go to our calculator. Let's use the table feature in our calculator to find the height of each of those functions. I hit table. I clear out whatever's in there. I'm going to hit second x squared for the square root. I type in x squared minus 1. So my function is the square root of x squared minus 1. I hit enter. Start doesn't matter. Step doesn't matter. Ask x needs to be highlighted. OK. I'm going to plug in the first number, which is 2.25, and hit enter. Now, this gives me a decimal version, so at least I don't have to convert that. But I'm going to round to three decimal places. So I'm getting 2.016 if I round to three decimal places. 2.75, enter. I'm getting 2.562 if I round to three decimal places. 3.25, enter. I'm getting 3.092, rounded to three decimal places. And 3.75, enter. I'm getting 3.614, rounded, three, rounded to three decimal places. So those are my heights. I know my widths. If I know my heights and widths, I can find my area. So I just multiply the two numbers, 2.016 times 0.5, I hit enter, and I'm getting 1.008. 2.562, sorry, 562 times 0.5, and I'm getting 1.281. 3.092 times 0.5, and I'm getting 1.546. And 3.614 times 0.5, and I'm getting 1.807. So that's the area of each individual rectangle. What do I do now? I add them together to get the total. So 1.008 plus 1.281 plus 1.546 plus 1.807. I hit Enter, and I'm getting a total of 5.64. 5.642 is my estimated area using the midpoint and four rectangles of that curve, the square root of x squared minus 1, on the given interval, which is 2 to 4.